the only time that any of us other than Miller has seen them was when we shot and they walked away and none of us have ever seen them again. They had no clue they were in a movie ever and Miller was able to, I, was it you or Jared who did this? Yeah, he, he printed screenshots of their faces and just canvassed schools around the area where we filmed to try to get releases from them. Um, so that was totally real. It wasn't creepy. It wasn't creepy. <laughs> <laughs> but what's cool, I think this is one of the coolest things that happens when you make a movie like this, is that those kids were making a real movie and they really were sort of keyed up about it. And they just, when they found out that we had made this movie, we were releasing it, they gave us a copy of that movie that they were making at the beginning called The Visitor, and we're going to put it on our DVD. So you'll be able to see the movie that they made. Yeah, that's right. And in fact, what's cool is we all just saw it last week for the first time, and they clearly didn't finish shooting it then, and so there's a point in the movie where all of them are like a year and a half older, they go through puberty, and the main guys are like giants. They look completely different, so. It changed mostly because of the budget, like we didn't think we had the money to shoot the ending that we wanted to shoot, where it, Josh's original idea was that, like it's just this full 20 minute carnage fueled bloodbath, <laughs> and, we, and, and that's what we sort of went into it thinking that it was gonna be, um, but we quickly realized that like, we couldn't do that with no money, and so we, when we were trying to get it finished in time for TIFF, we shot all of these really quick endings, I mean you, you probably remember those, Krista, like when we were in that school, we were actually in, Owen is a high school teacher, and we had exhausted all the school sets that we'd gone to. We couldn't go back to them. So we had to go to the school where he was currently a teacher. And, I don't work there anymore. <laughs> and had to shoot these endings. And they weren't, they weren't violent. Like we shot all these really weird things. We shot one where I get together with Chrissy. We shot one which is actually Evan's dad's idea. Um, we shot all these different variations because we thought we didn't have the money to end it the way that we wanted to. Um, but then when we watched that version of the movie, we were like, this sucks, we screwed up so bad. So then we found a way to shoot it really cheap. And uh, that take that you see, that end shot, is really the only, the single take that we got where that worked. Because we didn't have enough money to shoot it more than two or three times. And the, fir and the first two screwed up. So we only had that one take. And I remember... Brandon, like you, killed, like you killed yourself, like by the third take, he was, because he had to fall and lay dead for like, you know, two minutes, Josh, as well, and they were just so covered in bruises, because we had to, like, we couldn't, we couldn't put down pads or anything, we had to do it really real, I'm again, I'm, uh, Boozy made us get knee pads for him midday. <laughs> we were, uh, when you're making movies with no money, you do whatever you can, so we traded like a full day film workshop. Uh, to get a bunch of grade nine kids out on a Saturday. Um, and it was my old high school. I know some old Thornley people in the house. Um, and uh, one, there's one. <laughs> uh, and I just went to my old drama teacher I hadn't seen in like 15 years and, and say, uh, we're shooting this movie. And uh, like we said, we kind of ran out of high schools because I think we used five or six different ones in the movie. Um, and so they all knew that we had like a cop on set and, and he, uh, and the, the guys with the guns sort of do like a breakdown and tell them, you know, what's going on. But we, we shot that, uh, you know, not during school hours. That, that was a hundred percent, uh, staged. So the trick was kind of matching that with the stuff that wasn't staged and making it all seem, um, cohesive. Yeah. You know what we did? We talked to the best gun guy we could find. <laughs> And we were like, how can we get this gun stuff looking incredibly real and we don't have any money? And he told us what we had to do, and that's what we did. <laughs> but I think what was more interesting about that scene, especially for us when we watched it at home that night, was that Owen was bringing up things that he was really mad about, about the course of this film. Like he, I mean, not to, to put it bluntly, like he really hated filming a lot of this stuff. Um, but not, but you, should, you should talk about it. I'm not, I'm not an actor uh, at all, obviously, I acted in this movie, but I'm a, a teacher and I acted in this because I'm friends with these guys. So whenever we had, to, we only had a few scenes where I'm really doing anything where I have to sort of be emotional or real, you know what I mean? I normally just say like, Matt, Matt, come on. But a couple scenes I have to do something a little different. Uh, and so it's, I, and that's very hard for me to reach any sort of character place, but, but it is true that uh, that these guys, the whole time we were filming, we were always doing bits and impressions from movies that didn't fucking understand anything, didn't know what the bits were. I was like, I've seen The Godfather, we do some bits from The Godfather, but it was all really obscure. And so, but it really is true that everything I'm yelling at him 
on the cliff, I'm aware that I'm acting in the movie, but like I'm saying, you're always acting, you're always doing these bits, it's who are you performing for, I don't think this is funny. And, and that sounds like, like a joke answer, but it is true that, that it was, chant yes, it's close to home. That's the answer to the question, it's very close to home. That was, that was far enough along that he hated me at that point. And at the very end when he's screaming at me like, you're a loser, I hate you, and I'm not gonna be your friend anymore, I didn't talk to him after that for like a couple of weeks. Anyway, yes, so to answer your question, yes. I think a lot of people are interested in that, and I think we always say the same thing, and that's that all the things that we tried to show in the film were things that we'd either seen or things that had happened to some of us, but I don't think this represents any one of our youth or childhood. I mean, I think beat for beat, this is basically what did happen to Josh from grade <laughs> 9 to 12, but, um, but in general, we just tried to do things that, oh, well, I'll let Owen talk about it, because he really did get beat up a lot. No, just one thing that I think that is, uh, <laughs> that wasn't that cool, but, yeah, but we, but, um, I think everybody has, has been bullied to some extent, it doesn't mean that everybody's tormented, you know, day in and day out like these characters are, but, uh, but everybody's been a bystander of bullying as well, like everybody has seen it, uh, and I also think everybody's done it, like at some point in their life, and everybody's torn somebody else down, especially in high school, when, like the bullied kid, uh, you know, finds the one person they can find that is weaker than them, that they perceive as weaker than them, and takes advantage of it. And I, so I think that all sides of the experience are universal. So certainly it's something where we were all drawing on inspiration from our real lives, but I, I don't think it was a case where it was like, well, we were all bullied, so let's make a movie about being bullied. I think it's that every side is something that we can all relate to and have some responsibility for. Uh, it, it, so that's how I'd answer that. And handsome too. <laughs>